institutions in the country's economic capital, Douala, provide temporary solutions to the problems faced by commuters in Yala. On the outskirts of the country's economic capital, in this newscast, we take a look at the ordeals of local inhabitants, especially road users, in this edition of the news. How beneficial is the China-African summit taking place in Beijing, China, to Cameroon? And experts from a Central African sub-region is going to be telling us more on that in this edition of the news. They converge on the economic capital, Douala. Today, also in this newscast, we take a look at the extreme bad state of roads in some parts of the Mongo division of the Littoral region of Cameroon. We shall be right back with the details. Stay with us. Good evening to you, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome you to join us in this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. Rehabilitation works have started on the stretch of road that is leading to Yasan, Japoma, Frunyala, that is in the economic capital dollar, precisely in the dollar free subdivision. The road, which has been the subject of several reports on Equinox Television, was considered by several users as a veritable nightmare. Local inhabitants have also complained that it has so far affected their businesses negatively. A report on former Armstrong Sander was there. He tells us more in the following report. Water on the modest standing water. A good number of vehicles who dare ply the stretch of road leading to Japuma and Yasa through Nyala in Dwala 3 subdivision end up in this state. Heavy duty trucks, minibuses as well as motorbikes all suffer the same fate. The extremely bad state of the road has been a nightmare to users over a considerable period. You can see for yourself how an entire neighborhood has been cut off from the rest of the city. I doubt if those so-called authorities ply this road. This is bad. Even the road that leads to my village in Yokaduma is not this bad. The third surface that used to be here some years ago is inexistent. Users go through help plying this stretch of road every day. Drivers and riders fight over the limited available space with pedestrians, some of them out of pity for pedestrians or professional consciousness are obliged to baptize their vehicles in the pool of standing water. Some road users prefer to trek across what they qualify as a nightmare. Locals also complain of bad business and frequent accidents on this stretch. The incident cry of the population of Nala and users of this stretch of road that leads on one end to the Japuma Sports Complex, one of the sites to host a poll of the AFCON 2019 Jamboree pushed the Douala City Council to respond with what some have qualified as a temporary rehabilitation project. Trucks, bulldozers and compactors of the Douala City Council could be seen walking on the lathrite that was brought in to fill the potholes. Some inhabitants of Nyala and users of this unbearable stretch of road said the rehabilitation works which began over the weekend is not well done. They complain of poor drainage system which according to them will warrant the stagnation of water, consequently creating another problem. And how permanent is that project? Only time is going to tell. We now talk about pupils and students in Kongs above the Mongo Division littoral region of Cameroon that have to brave broken and muddy roads to get to their schools. Uh, parents and guardians say that the children are victims of accidents on daily basis and late coming due to the terrible state of the road in that part of the littoral region of Cameroon. Details with Innocent Aze. Fine. These degraded roads connect various schools in the town of Kongsamba in the Mungo Division. Some of the schools these rugged and muddy seasonal roads link include Government High School Lonako, Government Balingua High School Kongsamba, Government Balingua Nerj School Ekelko, among others. Worst of it all is the muddy and slippery nature of the seasonal roads used by pupils and students. Getting to school in the rainy season is problematic. Ce que font ces élèves, c'est quoi? 
Some are compelled to take two pairs of shoes along to manage the situation. When they arrive in the Goudron, they take two pairs of shoes along to manage the situation. Guardians and parents talk of negative consequences the poor roads have had on the education of their children. C'est comme ça donc qu'ils n'étudient pas dans de bonnes conditions. Avec le tenue, ils se trouvent, ils sont en fait toujours sales. Une fille qui composait le bac est tombée. A lady writing the baccalaureate examination fell in the mud and was compelled to return home and change. Et encore les cours qu'on est en train de donner parce qu'elle avait déjà raté beaucoup de choses et elle sortait loin. Elsewhere, learners are compelled to trek to school, especially when it rains. So because vehicles and Motorbikes cannot circulate flexibly, thus accident risk level elevates. C'est très accidentel. Au lieu d'arriver jusqu'à destination, il descend tout en bas pour continuer à pied. Inhabitants criticizing the roads plead on authorities in charge to have them fixed for the sake of people and students who have begun the 2018-2019 school year, such that the school is free. These roads have been like this for several years. Before we take a look at uh, the bad state of roads in the Douala Free Subdivision, precisely at Antrim B, that actually interrupted classes that was uh, yesterday on the day one of school resumption for the 2018-2019 school year, we continue with a series of reports in Loom of the Mongo Division of Cameroon to talk about back to school on the first day in Loom of the littoral region that uh, saw early punishment of some students who were, were refused uh, chanting the national anthem. As, uh, meanwhile, some school administrators condemned the assorted attires put on by some of the students. Some parents actually lamented on the decision that was taken yesterday. Innocent Aza once again tells us more in the following report. It was an effective kickoff of the 2018-2019 academic year in most schools in Lum, Mongo Division of the Littoral Region. But early punishments were given to some students at government's Balingua High School, Grand Souza. This student was punished because she resisted to chant the national anthem of the Republic of Cameroon. She says her religion instructs that only God should be honored, nothing else. I told them that the school is secular. Nobody has a right to refuse singing the national anthem because there is nothing like religious denominations in this school as a public school. Punctuality, discipline, and good conduct are components that students are expected to nurture, especially as insecurity looms around due to the Anglophone crisis. Considering the, the, the crisis uh, situation in Cameroon nowadays, we have warned them to be very careful the way they behave and how they move about because when they leave their homes to come to school, let them know just the home from house to school and from school back to their homes. Unlike new students in government's technical school, Loom, a Form 1 student in GBHS Grand Souza, delighted to be in secondary school, is also ready to excel. The school is beautiful. The school is very different from the primary school, so I'm happy. I will work hard so that I will pass my exam and go to Form 2. In government's technical school room, school administrators fume at the attitude of some students appearing on the one on campus in a sorted way. They describe such an act as silly. Monday was thus given as day of grace. On the other hand, registering students is extremely cumbersome and complicated as a explained by parents who are not familiar with the online registration system. The order to go to the registration point to pay fees and return on campus to issue receipt for validation before the child is considered registered is hectic. We spend double and get exhausted. However, school authorities believe parents will get used to the new registration system in a short run. They also believe all odds will be fitted for a smooth school year. Les Ambazoniens viendront détruire 
Grand Souza et Souza. Ça ne doit pas régner ici à Grand Souza. And here in the economic capital, Douala classes did not resume in some institutions of the Douala Free Subdivision. At entry B, that is in the Douala Free Subdivision, the bad state of the road kept pupils at home. That was precisely yesterday on the day one of the back to school 2018 2019. We can see how benches were practically empty in some of the institutions that were visited, though the teachers were present to teach out lessons. Pupils were simply not present on campus we can see how the road at entry being the dweller free subdivision was as bad it was practically difficult for motorbikes and even vehicles to move on that stretch of road let us now have an excerpt of one of the teachers she's going to be recounting their difficulties of yesterday she was speaking to equinox television take a listen here we are having a very serious problem with our roads the cause of this road is due to the poor drainage pattern that we have here in village. The road is really very bad, as you can see. You see water is standing everywhere. Gutters are not well fixed. They are not well opened. Water cannot circulate. And the roads, the, the pattern of the road is not well organized. The things that uh, the government pretends to have done, like fix the road, put, put ground, it, is, it has become very muddy. So we can't really tell that we are living in an environment where people can go to school this is that is a road user rather there in the dweller free subdivision talking about the extreme bad state of the road and just to know that the situation was not any different in the two wonderful regions of cameroon today that is the two of back to school 2018 2019 the governor of the southwest region of cameroon bernard okalia bilai actually visited some academic institutions but our reporter in the southwest region has made us to understand that very few students were on campus on day two of back to school many had the impression that uh, the closed doors as well as institutions and business premises yesterday in the two anglophone regions was as a result of the ghost town but the situation was not any different today the second day of back to school 2018 2019 well, of course we'll be telling you more on that in our subsequent newscast now here in the country's economic capital Douala, we talk about the meeting that is ongoing in beijing the 2018 african china summit that opened in beijing that was yesterday which continued today in attendance is cameron's president paul bia that is representing uh, the country he is equally attending alongside other african leaders President Paul Bia was the first African president to arrive in Beijing. Uh, that was yesterday the, during the uh, African-China uh, summit. In the summit, the Chinese president said that African countries should look at China for their credible partner that would foster their development without political strings attached. The uh, president, uh, Xi Jinping, further said that China, being the continent, uh, with uh, the largest or that is going to be bringing development particularly road and other infrastructural development within the African continent China is so far promising to disburse the whooping sum of 60 billion US dollars to uh, sponsor African infrastructure and here in the economic capital Douala experts and economic stakeholders from countries of CEMAC African sub-region are evaluating the implementation of the economic and financial reforms adopted by some heads of states in the year 2016. The reforms are designed to enhance Africa's development drive. The implementation phase two is being scrutinized at the eighth meeting, which began in the economic capital Douala. Today, our reporter Babila Jonathan caught up with two participants at the meeting in Douala. They spoke to him. Let's hear them in the following excerpt. We're having indications that we, of course, will be having that accept in the course of this newscast. But before we come to that, we take the reactions of some experts during the meeting which took place in Douala today. They were looking at the impact of the uh, African-China summit on Cameroon. How is it going to be beneficial to the country of President Paul Bia? Babla Jonathan tells us more in the following report. We had 21 measures, and up to today, I can tell you that around 16 measures are implemented. 16 measures, and uh, basically, the problem is uh, the problem of creating the same evaluation criteria in our region. 
we have agreed on that. Now we have to go at the level of each country and to see what we have to do on the remaining. And I think that on Saturday, I will be in the position to better explain and give you the statistics and the documents on that. Priorities is budget, fighting against corruption, uh, diversification of our economy, and a reform in the customs. We are now to evaluate the 21 measures that will be uh, take off that have been taken by our head of state during the during their extraordinary meeting in 2016 in Yaoundé. Those measures was to give to some correction on economic reform to have how to talk it just to have our economy be more resilient and more strong face to the economic crisis. Now we have to evaluate those measures and that the, 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 the measures that we are, that have already been taken or implemented have not produced some result. That is the outcome of the meeting that took place here in the economic capital Duala. We of course will be coming back to the reaction of other experts in our subsequent newscast. Just to note that the national president and presidential candidate of the NCMC political party, that is the presidential candidate of the national movement for Cameroon citizen, Prophet Franklin Defoe Afangui met with media men and women in Bonaberry of the Douala Four Municipality to present his manifesto to journalists that was today. It took place this afternoon in Bonaberry and some of his key points or his major reforms are he says that he is going to be transforming the form of the state into a federal system of government, step up energy supply through solar system. He's equally going to be restructuring the educational system in Cameroon and professionalize education through the identification of talent, especially at tender ages in the country. He is, is equally going to be transforming Cameroonian prisons into moral and vocational training centers. We, of course, will be coming back to that as well in a subsequent newscast. There, bringing us to the end of this edition of the Prime Time Newscast on Equinox Television viewers. So, thank you so much for joining us. Wishing you a blessed stay in the company of our programs. Until we meet again, goodbye.